Admired around the world for its delicate, even translucent body, and the refined patterns that grace its surface, porcelain has for centuries been a symbol of luxury and elegance. Unlike stoneware and earthenware ceramics, which are made from clay, porcelain is made with petunse, or feldspathic rock, ground to a fine powder and mixed with kaolin clay. When fired at a temperature around 1,450 degrees Celsius, the feldspathic rock vitrifies, creating porcelain smooth, glass-like surface, while the kaolin clay preserves the vessel's shape with surprising strength. The first porcelain wares were made in China during the Tang Dynasty. By the time of the Yuan and Ming Dynasties, centuries of experimentation had evolved these wares into the porcelain we recognize today. The town of Jingdezhen, surrounded as it was by quality deposits of kaolin and feldspathic rock, quickly became China's porcelain capital. From jade-like Qingbai wares of the southern Song period to blue and white porcelain wares of the Ming, artisans in Jingdezhen produced the highest quality wares of the day. When this Chinese porcelain was first brought to Europe, Westerners were quickly enamored with its beauty, spurring a vibrant trade between East and West for centuries. So highly coveted were porcelain objects that Europeans attempted to recreate them on their native soil. Eventually, in the 18th century, Europeans perfected a method for imitation porcelain, known as soft paste porcelain, which uses glass to mimic the feldspathic rock, but true hard paste porcelain remained a technique known only to East Asian producers. From China, Knowledge about the porcelain making process eventually disseminated to Korea in the 14th century, and the Koreans brought the knowledge and technology for making porcelain to Japan in the late 16th century. The very first Japanese porcelain was made in Arita, a town in Kyushu, the closest of Japan's four main islands to the Korean peninsula. The discovery of kaolin and feldspathic rock nearby made this early production possible. Early Japanese porcelain produced in Arita during the 1620s and 30s was primarily made for domestic use. It mimicked Jingdezhen's famous blue and white porcelain, known as sometsuke in Japanese, using a cobalt oxide underglaze to create the rich blue patterns. This early Japanese porcelain is known today as Shoki Imari, named for the Imari port from which it was exported to other regions of Japan. Later in the 1600s, Enamel overglazes in red, gold, green, and black were added on top of the cobalt blue underglaze, and it was this more colorful style of porcelain that was eventually produced in other regions of Japan, most notably Kutani and Seto. Although the polychrome enamel overglaze style is most commonly associated with Kutani kiln sites, recent archaeological research has discovered that most early polychrome wares were in fact made in Arita. One particularly popular style of polychrome overglaze porcelain, known as kakiemon wares for the kakiemon kilns where they were produced, features bold designs painted on a white background. In contrast, kokutani wares feature rich enamels and a particular palette of five colors, known in Japanese as gosai. One particular style of kutani porcelain, yoshidaya, features a palette of four colors, yellow, green, blue, and purple. This active period of Japanese porcelain production coincided with the fall of the Ming Dynasty in China. For several decades, political turmoil interrupted the porcelain production in Jingdezhen, so European merchants turned to Japanese porcelain to meet the increasing demand in European markets. In the 1650s, the Dutch East India Trading Company began exporting Japanese porcelain to Europe, where consumers fell in love with the colorful wares. Following the establishment of the Qing dynasty and the accompanying political stability, porcelain production resumed in Jingdezhen, which began copying the Japanese polychrome technique. Greater production, combined with lower cost, soon won the European market over again. Though dedicated consumers in Europe purchased Japanese porcelain through the 18th century, it wasn't until the revival of interest in the 19th century that Japanese porcelain entered a new period of development. Following the Meiji Restoration of 1868 and Japan's reopening to the international world, Japanese ceramists once again focused their attention on creating porcelain for the export market. Kilns such as the Makuzu Workshop in Kyoto created a variety of porcelain wares that were displayed in international expositions and fairs and won many awards and medals. While these international fairs were incredibly influential during the Meiji period, Current trends in the art of Japanese porcelain are in many ways indebted to the life and legacy of Tomimoto Kenkichi, the father of modern Japanese ceramics. Unlike most ceramists during his lifetime, Tomimoto did not come from a lineage of potters. 
Rather, he arrived to the world of ceramics later in life, not as a craftsman, but as an artist, having earlier studied architecture at the Tokyo School of Fine Arts. Without an illustrious family tradition to uphold, Tomimoto was free to pursue new directions in his ceramics. More technically difficult than earthenware, porcelain was the medium with which Tomimoto developed his theories of ceramic art, whose profound influence is evident in the work of many top 20th and 21st century ceramic artists. His theory of unity between form and surface, and the conviction that one should not copy someone else's designs, were taught to his many students over decades as a professor of what is today's Kyoto City University of Arts. Indeed, while his mastery of overglaze enamel techniques earned him the designation of living national treasure in 1955, his greatest legacy is perhaps that of his students, whose careers have redefined the landscape of Japanese ceramics in the modern age. In particular, the students of Tomimoto's who work with porcelain, many of them women, have uncovered new expressive possibilities using the medium. Matsuda Yuriko's works, for example, blend whimsical forms with traditional enamel overglaze techniques and patterns. Kondo Yuzo, Fujimoto Yoshimichi, and Maeda Masahiro, on the other hand, have brought bold, modern designs to traditional vessel forms. In the post-war period, the avant-garde Sodeisha movement based in Kyoto, led by Yagi Kazuo, Suzuki Osamu, and Yamada Hikaru, began experimenting with porcelain as a sculptural medium, a dramatic departure from porcelain's primarily functional history. This period of experimentation continues to inspire contemporary porcelain artists like Kyoto's Fukumoto Fuku and Kino Satoshi, both of whom play with the expressive possibilities of porcelain. Fukumoto's interwoven, multi-layered vessels and Kino Satoshi's swirling sculptural shapes both highlight the unique juxtaposition of fragility and strength embodied in porcelain. Our 2021 Winter Show exhibition highlights this incredible range of porcelain creation by modern and contemporary Japanese ceramists. We look forward to welcoming you to our virtual exhibition.